fellow aviators, VREF Simmer here. Welcome to leg 22 of the World Tour. Today we are in beautiful Telluride, Colorado. And I'm using live weather, but we will be flying in the middle of the day so that we can see the mountains. And it is a spectacular day here in Colorado. We will have some decent winds once we're up trying to get through the mountain passes. So definitely expecting a little bit of turbulence as we go through um, the mountain passes. But it's a beautiful day. Go ahead and hop inside the aircraft. We'll get this pit fired up and ready to roll. So for the starting procedure here in the checklist, we need to go ahead and hold the brakes. So we'll get them on rudder pedals and hold the brakes down. Those are tested and they are set. Fuel selector, we need to get that on. So we'll go into our main fuel tank for now. And we're showing full fuel, as you can see there, those blue indicators. And for the cold engine start, mixture to rich. Got that. Propeller high RPM. And throttle is open quarter of an inch. See it down there. Master switch, we'll flip that on. Battery master on. And fuel boost pump needs to be on three, two to three seconds max. One, two, turn that off and mixture to idle cutoff and sorry let me get this down here starter switch we're ready to go ahead and start the engine so here we go all right we got a good start excellent mixture is set and oil pressure is looking good right there. I'm just going to try to tick these items here on the checklist. It's a little finicky at times. Oil pressure is checked. I'm going to go ahead and turn the alternator on. And starting engine check is complete. We're going to go ahead and turn on the avionics master now. We'll get our transponder on. Stand by. Get that warming up. We'll pull up the ATIS here. Kilo Tango Echo X ray automated weather observation 190000. Zulu. Wind 110 F14. Visibility Niner. Sky condition clear. Temperature minus 26 C dew point. 1 tree C altimeter 3030. Kilo Tango Echo X ray right, automated. 3030 will be taken off Zulu. to the east. Wind All right, so I'm going to select our runway. It's going to be runway Niner here at Telluride. And I think we're going to have to back taxi quite a bit. So go ahead and we'll begin our taxi. Kilo Tango Echo X-ray traffic pits November Niner Tree 1 Juliet Delta is taxiing to runway Niner. It looks like we're cleared to the right, so I'm going to taxi out to the right. Here we go. Use a little differential braking. All right, there we go. Actually, windsocks are favoring runway two. Seven. Oh, they're showing both ways. This windsock is showing runway nine, or the other showing two seven. I might just do two seven. Actually, let me select that. It's a much easier taxi, and winds are light. We'll be okay. Kilo Tango Echo X-ray traffic pits November nine or three one Julia Delta is taxiing to runway two seven. All right, so when we get down here to the runway, I'll go ahead and show you all the flight plan what we're planning here today. It'll be a scenic flight through the San Juan Mountains in Colorado. And we're in this lovely pits special, which will allow us to easily maneuver over the mountains and down into the valleys and over the passes. So uh, it's a perfect aircraft for this type of flight. And we'll maybe pull a few fun aerobatic maneuvers along the way. And I do not have a lot of experience flying this plane on flight sim. So, uh, I know last time I flew it, the takeoff was a little bit interesting. So hopefully I can do a little bit better today.
but it's a, it's a finicky plane and but a lot of fun once you're in the air. See, it's just a beautiful burning and it affords us some excellent visibility of the scenery as we fly along through this part of southwestern Colorado on leg 22 of the world tour. It's definitely a leg I've been looking forward to for some time. So thank you all for joining. And once again, I am flying on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You can definitely join in if you'd like. You'll see uh, my gamer tag is cron321. And obviously I'm currently at Telluride. So probably not too many people around this area. Just pick a, get yourself in a pits and, and join along. And here I'll show you in just a second our flight plan. I'm going to stop this right here. And let's pull up Sky Vector. That way you all can see what the plan is. So I'll transition that over here. Alright, so here's Sky Vector and our route. So we're going to be taking off out of Telluride, heading to the east. And then we'll kind of head northeast over the mountains and near Mount Snuffles. Uh, and it's up at 14,150 feet. So you can see it's pretty high altitude into Ure, Colorado. Then we'll head to the southeast and south through the Red Mountain Pass, 11,000 feet, and down into Silverton, Colorado, which is one of the endpoints on the famous Durango Silverton Railway through the San Juan Mountains. Definitely recommend taking that if you ever have the chance. And then from there, we'll continue northeast to Eureka, north, and then we'll take a hard right at Animus Forks to the east over Cinnamon Pass at 12,600 feet. And there's Castle Lakes Airport, which is in Flight Sim, so you can also join there if you'd like on this flight. And then we'll head north and over the Slum Guion Pass at 11,360 feet, south through the Spring Creek Pass at 10,900, and around the bend here and end up at Mineral County Memorial Creed, Colorado. So that's our flight plan today. And it's a beautiful part of the country, beautiful part of the world. Let's go ahead and get rolling here. I'm going to do a quick run up, make sure everything's working well with the engines. Do a quick mag check here. And this airplane has plenty of power available. Check our mags, make sure everything's good. Alright, looks good. Check idle. And we'll make sure that's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and announce our takeoff on runway 27. We'll be departing the pattern to the east. Here we go. Kilo Tango Echo X ray traffic pits November 9 or Tree 1 Juliet Delta taking off runway 27 east departure. Runway 27 on the pavement on the sign. And this is a fun aircraft to fly, let me tell you. It's just tricky on the grounds, really on the runway. So I'm going to try to do a better job today of controlling it. You got to make sure you are lined up and going straight. Right where you want to be before you get going. Okay, here we go. sensitive. Probably was my control settings, but I'm going to go ahead and get us in the air. Here we go. And now we're under control. <laughs> and look at those beautiful mountains out there to the right, up to the north of us. Alright, we're going to make an abrupt departure from the pattern, so here we go. Down into the valley. So we'll be departing the pattern to the east, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Do a quick 
control check here, make sure things looking good. Head to the mountains. And tell you, as you, as you know, it's, a, it's that famous airport in Colorado that's just right there on that elevated, almost it's not quite a mesa, but kind of kind of like a mesa. As you approach in over that western edge of the field, which we did coming in here. So from here, we're going to kind of head just to the north of Telluride, this road heading up into the mountains. This will take us up toward Mount Snuffles, and we'll be able to go down into the valley on the other side of the mountain here toward Ure, Colorado. And you can see we're rocking around just a little bit with the winds coming off the mountains. There's Telluride down there. Be able to make out some of the ski slopes, maybe as we head a little farther east here. But as you can see, this pit special has plenty of power available to get us up and over the mountains. One of the reasons I wanted to fly this aircraft today instead of the Cessna 172. And also, you can't beat having this bubble canopy, and also view right between your legs so turn the transponder on I think I forgot to get that before takeoff so here we go into the mountains and yep there's some of the ski slopes at Telluride Colorado and Mount Snuffles up to the north See, this plane is just a real joy to fly. Excellent performance, even at high altitude. It's a great one for flying in and around the mountains of Colorado and around the 14ers that you might encounter here. So there's the airport way back off our uh, wing on the 9 o'clock position there. Continue down on this mountain road here. Mount Snuffles off our left, and we'll follow this down toward Ure, Colorado. here we should be getting there and from uh, Ure we're going to be heading to the southeast initially and slightly southwest we're just going to be following the mountain pass down and eventually we'll get to Silverton Colorado
should be coming out here soon into Ure. Should be down here in this valley, I believe. That's a cool little uh, valley there. Just following the river down. comes Ure just over the mountain pass here. Ure, Colorado, off the nose. And now I'll be turning right into the south and we'll follow the road. Is climbing a little bit. And there's our road. Get a quick view of Ore here. We'll do a uh, do a little emblem in here. Let's get this up and then we'll flip around. There's Ore. And you can see looking back up to the north, uh, kind of flattens out a bit. But we're really, as we head south now, we're going to be heading into the heart of the San Juan Mountains. So let's turn ourselves around here. Here we go. We'll flip up and then bring the wings back to level. And here we go. maintain our altitude a little bit here. We're going to be coming up on the Red Mountain Pass, which is at 11,075 feet. As you can see, currently we are at 9,500 feet, so we'll have to climb up a little bit to get over the pass up ahead as we head south from Ure, Colorado, and down toward Silverton. And into the heart of these beautiful mountains in southwestern Colorado. bit to the right here that's just a valley there with the river flowing down through it and beautiful views looking back toward Ure to the north Let's see if I can bring up the sky vector chart for you all to look at for just a second give you a quick update on where we're headed so you can see we just finished going in through Ore. We're now heading down to the south toward the Red Mountain Pass, and then we'll take a little le the left turn towards Silverton. All right, so we're up at 11,000 feet. We just have to climb up another 100 feet, and we're basically, we'll be able to clear the pass now. So we're in good shape. to be right on the other side of the mountains there. Off our right wing. And the cool thing about this pit is this window you have right below you. It's great for being able to follow roads. So you can see we're following the road there. But also got to make sure you're not about to fly straight into a mountain. Here comes the Red Mountain Pass up ahead. You can see it there at about our 11 o'clock. And we're well above it now. 
which generally you do want to pass over these mountain passes a ways above and, and you generally want to pass over it 45 degree angle but we're just playing for fun today on this simulator and have plenty of extra horsepower in this pit special which is something you can never have enough of when doing some high altitude mountain flying alright so here we come through the red mountain pass I'm guessing that must be the red mountain somewhere over here to the right. It's one of these mountains is the Red Mountain. <laughs> Alright. Now we'll go down into the valley and towards Silverton. So we'll be taking a little bit of a left turn to the southeast. Do a quick barrel roll here in the valley. So here we go. I'm going to take this one to the right. Here we go. This airplane is extremely responsive on the controls. Wow, beautiful mountains there up off the right wing. Somewhere in this area is Chattanooga, Colorado. Not Chattanooga, Tennessee, but Chattanooga, Colorado. Somewhere in this area. Alright, so we should be turning left here and should see Silverton off the nose shortly. And I believe that's it. Dead ahead. If you continue to the south and to the right, you'll eventually uh, get to Durango, Colorado. And that's exactly where the railroad would take you. But we're going to be taking a left turn to the northeast to continue our path through the San Juan Mountains toward Mineral County Airport and Creed, Colorado. Alright, so here comes Durango, or not Durango, Silverton, Colorado. In the heart of the San Juans. And the railroad would take you down that direction toward Durango. So let's pull ourselves up here. And let's do a quick loop, just for the fun of it. see the railroad. It's a very famous railroad here in the United States. Old fashioned, I believe it's a steam locomotive that you take. It just takes you along the river. There's, I think that's where it, it uh, ends up. But you ride from Durango north all the way up here to Silverton along the river in the middle of the mountains and have lunch in Silverton and then you head back down south to Durango after lunch so something to definitely check out if you ever have the opportunity I did it once years ago with my family on a vacation and it was a memory that lasts a lifetime alright so let's head on up to the northeast now toward our next checkpoint 
We'll be coming up on Howardsville, Eureka, and north to Animus Forks. And next crossing of the mountain will be at the Cinnamon Pass, which is at a towering 12,598 feet. Here, I'll pull up the Sky Vector so y'all can see our next leg here on this tour. So we just went through Silverton right here. We're going to continue in, like I said, to the northeast toward Eureka and north to the Cinnamon Pass at Animus Forks. So that's where we're headed. Look down below us, you can see... I'm hoping I can see the river. I think maybe that's the Animus River, which does flow all the way down into Durango. There it is. This must be the settlement of Howardsville. There should be a road going off to the right, and there it is. Yep, so this is Howardsville down below us. There it is. So we'll continue up north. Next town or settlement should be Eureka, Colorado, according to the sectional chart. Turn us inverted, give us a little look for a second. And that's kind of a weird view. That must be Eureka there. Let's turn us back around here. Straight and level. Good turbulence off the mountains here. You know, the winds are picking up. As you head north in Colorado today, the uh, winds are really getting strong up in the mountains. They get kind of treacherous if you're in a small piston aircraft. Some beautiful colors in these mountains up here. And where the Animus River kind of cuts hard to the left, that's when we know we're getting close to the Cinnamon Pass according to the sectional chart. And Animus Forks should be right in this area. So just north of Animus Forks and where the river cuts hard to the west is we should see the road going to Cinnamon Pass, which just might be out here at about our one o'clock. We'll just make sure it checks out. Do a quick turn, 270 degrees around this area. And yeah, this looks like this is the Animus Forks area. So let's do a quick turn around it to the left and we'll line up for the Cinnamon Pass. Yep, there's Animus Forks. Just a beautiful area, wow. Yeah, there's Cinnamon Pass, I can see it right there. Yep. Passes always have a very distinct look to them. Just kind of level out. And especially if you see a road in the sectional, that really helps you identify it. So, it's rolling here, so I'll keep climbing this up a bit. Make sure we have full power. Here we go to the Cinnamon Pass. And we'll just be following the road out of the Cinnamon Pass. It'll kind of wrap around a little bit north and then a little bit south until it eventually gets to Sherman. And just past that is the Castle Lakes airstrip. So if you do want to join in on this flight in the pits or another aircraft. Castle Lakes Airport is the one to check out right now. I do not know the identifier, but it is between Telluride and Mineral County Airport in southwestern Colorado. 
right, so here we go down through the Cinnamon Pass. The mountains kind of look like cinnamon in this area. Those interesting colors. It looks like you can see some of the. Make sure I don't overspeed us too much. I'll come out on the power a bit. Get us down here in the valley so we can enjoy just the grandeur of these mountains here. Well, you can see this is just a really fun route that really takes you through the heart of the San Juan Mountains. So we took our little bit of a jaunt to the north and now we're due east and we're going to be heading a little bit to the south towards Sherman, Colorado and the road should be cutting us due east again toward the Castle Lakes airstrip which is supposed to be here in the flight sim so it is selectable from the world map. So I'll see if we can spot it here in just a bit. This is some fun flying. before the road turns up to the north again. So it looks like it'll be around this bend, this mountain right off the nose, or just on the other side of that, I think is where we should see the Castle Lakes Airport. And I'm not gonna land there, but I do wanna check it out and see if, see what it looks like. Might be a fun place to stop on a future excursion through this area. I think it should be right in this area down here. But who knows? I do see some lakes, so that would make sense. And perhaps it's this little strip of uh, land right here in the middle of all these lakes. Maybe that's the Castle Lakes airstrip. Or that could actually that might be it right over there. Or that might be the road. I don't know. I'll have to load it up later. I don't see anything I can clearly identify as an airport at this time. <laughs> But somewhere down there is an airport. Apparently. Okay, so out of Castle Lakes, we're going to be heading north until we go past Lake San Cristobal, and then we're going to be taking a right turn over the Slum Guillaume Pass. So I'll pull up the Sky Vector chart once again so you all can see what the plan is, where we're going. So we just passed the Castle Lakes Airport right here. We'll be heading up north past Lake San Cristobal. And then we take an immediate right turn to the east along with the road through the Slum Guillaume Pass at 11,361 feet. From there we'll be turning left, and, or I'm sorry, to the right and south through the Spring Creek Pass. That's our plan. Yeah, let's do it. 
And here comes the lake. Let's see if I can get us a good view of it. There it is. See, there's some white caps out there today. Uh, wind is definitely kicking up. You can see we're getting rocked in the airplane right now. But modeling the white caps here in Flight Sim, that is so cool to see. You see that when you're really flying, that's a dead giveaway. The surface winds are rocking. And there's our road that's going to take us through the Slim Gion Pass. Looks like there's some really cool uh, cabins and homes right on the lake there. You can get a neat place to live or just to camp out for the night. Alright, so we'll take our turn to the right following the road. Toward the Slim Gion Pass. And the road snakes around a bit. And we gotta get up to 11,361 uh, feet in order to cross the pass up here. So I'm guessing the altimeter has changed. About a uh, hundred, two hundred feet higher than on my altimeter than what the elevation of the pass is supposed to be. So, and we are getting rocked. So I'm holding the <laughs> stick steady here, and you can see we're just bouncing around. That's not me. That's just the wind, the turbulence over the mountains. Looks like we're pulling about two G's at times with these with the turbulence. All right, so after we pass here, we're going to be taking our right turn to the south, and the next pass is at uh, is the Spring Creek Pass at 10,901. So we'll go ahead and turn and follow the road. And you can see we're just going to continue south and cut around the mountains back up to the northeast and it'll be right there at Creed, Colorado and the Mineral County Memorial Airport. So say bye to that part of the San Juan Mountains. Sure was fun flying through there. And it's not quite as dramatic in this area up ahead. High altitude, but see it's kind of leveled out a bit all right so while we're on this heading here I'll pull up the sectional chart again courtesy of sky vector right, you can see we've turned south now going over the screen the Spring Creek Pass. We'll go past the Continental Reservoir, looking for the Santa Maria Reservoir as another checkpoint. Just follow the valley down to the south, and then we'll head northeast and up to Creed, Colorado. Air elevation there is going to be 8,680 feet. Pattern altitude will be at 9,700. 122.9 is the common traffic advisor frequency. I'm going to go ahead and tune that in so we can start listening up for any traffic in the area. Make sure we're ready for that. And we'll be landing on runway 25 this evening. Go ahead and announce our position. Charlie 24 traffic picks November 9 or tree 1 Julia Delta 1 3 miles northwest 12,200 feet inbound to land runway 25. Alright, there's the Continental Reservoir, just off the right wing. And let's continue following the road to the south here. And 
and I'll try to post this uh, flight route in the comments the description of this video on my uh, YouTube channel VREF Summer be sure to subscribe to that if you haven't already I'll have every leg of the world tour posted on there and uh, also the Facebook page VREF Summer I'll try to post flight plans at least the, the picture of where I went and uh, feel free to check out the legs if you want on your free time you can always jump in live too if you'd like I just love to have some of you around. Now you can see it's uh, this is a pretty wide valley here. Neat little lake there. It's the Santa Maria Reservoir according to the sectional chart. few of the lakes shown on the sectional chart so we're right on track getting really close to the airport it's it's just on the other side of this ridge I could just cut across right here and we would probably be lined up right with the airport I'm gonna do a loop really quickly and see if we can maybe even see it so here we go I don't think we're gonna be able to that's all did an incredible job with this simulator and the default scenery. And you know it's just going to keep on improving as they continue to put out the patches. I can't recommend this particular route enough. It, this has been a lot of fun today. Yep, taking the fun, the fun approach to Creed, Colorado. So we we should be we'll be wrapping around this uh, kind of this mountain that's here to the left of our aircraft, and should be coming up to Creed, Colorado. Then make our way. settlements down there should be coming up on Spar City somewhere down there to the south
lights are heading up to the north east now and just around the mountain pass we should have the Creed, Colorado and the Mineral County Airport where we'll be trying to land the pits which that's the most difficult part of this flight is taking off and landing in this pits all right let me announce our position again Charlie 2 4 traffic pits November 9 or Trey 1 Julia Delta 4 miles southwest 10,400 feet inbound to land runway 25. There's the runway, so I'm going to go ahead and announce that we're entering downwind. Try to get us down to 9,700 and we'll start slowing a bit. Charlie 2 4 traffic pits November 9 or Trey 1 Julia Delta is on downwind runway 25. I think they've fixed the wind socks yet to where you can actually look at the wind socks and know which direction you want to land. So I'm just going to take us in on runway 27. Or actually, I think it's 25. Wow, it is really windy. We're getting rocked here. Let's keep our airspeed up just a bit. I don't see anybody in the pattern. Don't hear anybody on the radio. We were starting to stall there just from the wind gusts. Alright, looks like. Okay, so we're lining up final. We need to be just north of the river here. So that'll be a good target for us. I'm going to go ahead and announce base. Alright, find it. There we go. Charlie 2 4 traffic pits November 9 or Tree 1 Julia Delta is on base runway 25. I'm going to take a steeper approach just so we can see the runway well. I'm going to go ahead and announce final. Just focus on flying the plane. Charlie 2 4 traffic pits November 9 or Tree 1 Julia Delta is on final runway 25. There's Creed up to the north. Here comes the runway. I'm gonna make sure I get. All right, and this is one of the trickiest parts: is trying to land this thing without killing yourself. Virtually, that is, having a crash. All right, point off the nose. That's a good reference point. This patch out here. As long as we're pointed at that, we're lined up with the runway pretty much. You can see, just no flaps in this aircraft. are out of the west. And it bounced. Nice. Actually not nice, but you know what I mean. You can see the rudder pedals are just so sensitive. I'm barely touching them. And we're just rocking. All right, and the terminal is down this kind of three quarters of the way down the runway from what I saw on downwind, scouting it out. Yep, I see a hangar there, just coming up off the, at about the one o'clock position off the nose. All right. So not a bad landing for me in the pits. Definitely a room for improvement. Don't want to be bouncing. All right, so we'll be taking our right-hand turn off just up ahead somewhere. Pull us back to idle. We need to start slowing our roll a bit. Start slowing down. Slow it down. There we go. Don't 
don't want to do a crazy ground loop or anything crazy. There we go. I'll announce that we're clear of the runway. Charlie 2 4 traffic pits November 9 or Tree 1 Julia Delta is clear of the runway. And we'll just spin this bird around. I can push it back into position after we shut down if needed. Alright, we're just going to stop it right here. Alright. Turn off the transponder. Get down standby. And off. Perfect. Let's get the avionics off. And I'm going to check the mags, make sure they will turn off. There we go. Engine is off. Mixture idle cutoff. Go ahead and turn off the alternator and the battery master. And turn the fuel selector off. I think that's everything here. Well, thanks for riding along on that beautiful leg through the San Juan Mountains here in southwestern Colorado and leg 22 of the world tour. We continue in next leg on 23 to the north to Gunnison, Colorado. So be sure to stay tuned to the Facebook page, YouTube channel to check it out. Love to have some of y'all join along live um, if you're able to. But for now, VRF Summer signing off. Thanks for riding along. I'll see you again soon here in southwestern Colorado.